The humble fruit fly Drosophila melanogaster is one of the workhorse model organisms in modern biology research. Every year, thousands of research papers using the fly are published. An indicator of the fly's importance to biology are the six Nobel Prizes that have been awarded to scientists for their work in the fly. The use of Drosophila as a model organism was first proposed in 1901 by Charles Woodworth, a professor at the University of California. Thomas Morgan of Columbia University established Drosophila as a system to study genetics, discovering in 1911 the principles of chromosomal inheritance. Drosophila has continued to be one of the most commonly used model organisms in the field of genetics. In the year 2000, it became only the second animal to have its whole genome sequenced, paving the way for genomes in larger animals and humans. Fruit flies are even involved in space exploration. In the late 1940s, they became the first animals ever launched into space, paving the way for human spaceflight. Flies still play an important role in space exploration today. Studying the cardiovascular and immune systems of flies aboard the International Space Station has given us insights into the effects of prolonged spaceflight, understanding crucial to future missions to Mars and beyond. Practically speaking, flies have a lot of advantages as lab animals. They're easy to breed in captivity, they're easy to sort by genetic phenotypes, and because of the sheer number of Drosophila scientists, over 4,000 labs around the world, there now are just many resources that make working in the fly easier. For example, the Bloomington Stock Center maintains a library of 84,000 different genetic strains available to scientists by online order. We now have a wealth of tools available to genetically modify flies in the lab, allowing us to do things like finding specific cell populations, record neural activity optically, or even manipulate their behavior by shining lasers into the fly's brain a process known as optogenetic activation. But what can we learn using flies uh, that is really relevant to us? As in other fields of biology, we study flies not just to understand these animals in and of themselves, but to uncover principles of biological function which may hold true across species. Despite not looking anything like us, 60% of genes are conserved between the fruit fly and humans including 75% of all known human disease genes. Many of their biological systems are also organized in broadly similar ways. Because of this, flies are used to conduct research into many diseases which impact humans, including cancer, diabetes, stress responses, and aging, as well as neurodegenerative disorders such as Parkinson's, Huntington's, and Alzheimer's. Flies are also used as a model system for development, genetics, evolution, and of course, neuroscience. While the brain of the fly is small compared to a human's, it shares some similarities. As in mammalian brains, the brain of the fly can be divided into anatomically distinct brain regions, which have different functions, such as the optic lobes in pink, which process visual information, or the central complex in teal, which makes navigational decisions. The fly brain has been used by neuroscientists to discover the biomolecular dynamics behind circadian rhythms and sleep, and has also greatly advanced our understanding of neural computations underlying sensory processing, particularly in vision and smell. The fly also uses its brain to orchestrate a variety of complex behaviors, many of which are studied in labs. These include escape responses, in which flies jump out of the way of looming threats, flight maneuvers, which allow the fly to maintain its heading even in windy conditions, and social behaviors in which flies interact with other members of their own species. By using genetic tools to label neurons in the brain, we can even capture neural activity in flies as they behave. The fly connectome, which you will be exploring today, has dramatically accelerated the pace of circuit discovery such as the mapping of this auditory circuit, which allows flies to detect courtship song. The connectome has also allowed neuroscientists to ask new types of scientific questions at brain scale, such as mapping the relationships between brain regions, which consist of hundreds or even thousands of neurons, or building computational models with anatomical neural networks. In the coming decades, continuing work in the fly will uncover more of the secrets of brain structure and function.